Happy Independence Day, everybody. This is your boy, Money Flipping Matt Richards, bringing the virtual burgers and cyber sparklers for America's 244th birthday. Oh, yeah. Did you have a great holiday? A quiet one at home or something more involved? Hmm? How many of you wearing red, white, and blue right, right now? That's patriotism right there, huh? Yeah, that makes one of us. Seen any fireworks yet? We just heard them all over your neighborhood, huh? I know they've been going off in the city for weeks. All right, we're in a festive mood here at HQ, and we're all set for a very special 4th of July game with our friends the U.S. Census Bureau. Yeah! Official census data and your responses to our polls all this week will fuel most of the questions tonight. We're celebrating democracy and demography in one go. And as always, anyone handing in 12 straight correct answers will claim a cut of our $5,000 prize pot. Will you achieve the American dream or grieve when you lose steam? But the real way to win is to hand in your census form. Answering the census helps you and your community in so many ways, from getting you representatives in Congress to getting that federal money. We. But don't take my word. Our actor friend Taryn Manning from Orange is the New Black, she agrees. Take it away, Taryn. What's up, H Cuties? I am Taryn Manning from Orange is the New Black. On that show, I played an incarcerated woman, and I am here to talk to you about this census. Did you know that a lot of ex-offenders aren't counted, as well as children under five? So I don't mean to sound annoying, but you know that little card that you got in the mail? Well, that card is very, very important for your future, and the data is 100% confidential. So go to 2020census.gov, fill it out, go have a great game, players, and a great day. Thank you so much, Taryn. But I got so caught up in the census, I almost forgot the charity. All weekend, we are saluting our friends at Team Rubicon. That's right. We told you last night that they help out during natural disasters and started to tell you how they're helping during COVID-19. But there's a long list of ways they do that. Check out my girl, Amanda, telling you some of them. Hello, H Cuties. I'm Amanda McDonald from Team Rubicon. In response to COVID-19, around the country, we've been helping food banks with uh, preparing and delivering meals. We're running mobile testing sites uh, for COVID-19. And beginning a couple months ago, we've been sending volunteer healthcare workers to Navajo Nation in order to relieve some of their staff who, who had been working nonstop for weeks straight after the COVID outbreak. So if you'd like to join me and our over 100,000 volunteers nationwide, in helping people on the worst day after the aftermath of a disaster, please check out teamrubiconusa.org for more information. All right, great work, Amanda. We're proud to be matching our $5,000 prize money and another donation to Team Rubicon. And whoever wants to donate, you can go to hqtrivia.com slash Rubicon for the page where you can do it. Okay, are we all ready for the game? It's the 4th of July, y'all. All right, the questions are lined up and standing at attention, so limber up your brain and let's do this thing, okay? Nothing to it but to HQ it with question number one. Here it is. Q1, which 3D shape is composed of six square-shaped faces? Cube, pyramid, or sphere? All right, if you have hopes of making a sphere shape out of squares, you better set the weekend aside because that's a long-term project. Much easier to connect six squares into a cube, baby. Cube is the answer I was looking for. 52,168 of you got it right. Cube! That's how we're doing it. All right, question number two. Coming right at you. Gesundheit. Here we go. Hey, now. This is our first question tailored to our poll data. On Monday, we asked you which age group you were in, and the winner was 26 to 50 years of age. If that's you, here comes your customized Q2, all right? Players born between 1970 and 1994 all witnessed what? Fall of Berlin Wall, manned lunar mission, or new millennium? What's it gonna be? All right, only a few in this demographic had a chance of seeing the, you know, live moonwalk footage as 1972 marked the end of the Apollo program. More of you saw the wall come down in 89, but if this is your age group, you saw 
the big digit turnover 20 and a half years ago. New millennium. Oh my gosh, that's a savage question. Ten thousand one hundred seventy-eight. If you got that right, that was the first savage of the game at Q2. Woo! It's too early in the game for this kind of savagery. Ha! Extra lives. Let's go. Drop them like it's hot. Here we go. Q3. What is the most common marital status among U.S. citizens? Never married, married, or divorced. I'm looking for the most common marital status among U.S. citizens. All righty. The U.S. Census isn't like Facebook, okay? There's no is complicated option. But it's not as needed with straight yes or no answers. Uh, questions like these. And romance springs eternal in the States because very close to 50% of you are hitched. 10,360 in the mixy. Woo! I feel like this is going to be some big money. What'd you say, Russ? Yes. Russ says yes. All right, question number four. On Tuesday, we surveyed you on gender. Here's the Q4 we have for those results, all right? Q4, what line of tools was a Sears brand for 90 years? Black & Decker, Craftsman, or Stanley? I'll just let y'all know there's a little, there was a little, little more male players that day than female players. Uh, so, you know, that's why this question, not, we're not trying to get into the stereotypes. Men use tools, ah! But we did have to come up with a question. So, in happier times, the Sears Empire owned many prestige brands like Kenmore, Die Hard Batteries, and <laughs> Craftsman Tools. 11,344, got it right, Craftsman Tools. Question number five is all the way live. I'm still thinking about question two. Yowza. Ooh. Question number five for America. Here we go. A true neon sign will glow what color? Green, orange, or purple? What's it going to be? All right, all right. Yep, yeah, there we go. We can all, uh, we can call all glowing signs neon signs, but when you think about it, why would they be different colors? It turns out if clear, gla clear ga glass, woohoo, that's tricky. Clear glass is filled with neon gas and heated, you get a nice vivid orange color. Orange, you glad I said orange? Oh my gosh, that's another savage question. Whoa. 4,430 dirty birdies. <laughs> Got it right at Q5. Question number six, and it goes a little something like this. Yeah. Here we go. Q6. Let's get it. In Wednesday's poll, you told us 48% of you are East Coast residents. So are we. So we definitely have a Q6 for that, okay? Here we go. Which of these East Coast states has the highest population? Florida, Georgia, or New York? Florida, Georgia, or New York? New York. <laughs> We're very proud of our city here in New York, and it certainly boosts the state's population into the top five. But who would have thought? Florida's collection of cities and metro areas nudges them past us to be the third biggest state. Florida. That was the answer I was looking for. Now, if they would all just get off the beach and put on a mask, it would be great. 3,204, you got it right. Florida or Florida. Yeah. That's a clever rap name. Question number seven, let's go. What traditional dish is often eaten with a napkin over one's head? A bird, a fish, or a rodent? What is it going to be? All right, I think this is a crazy rich people thing. Uh, <laughs> explanations for the napkin include hiding your deed from God and letting you spit out the bones unseen. Whatever. Be prepared to bolt from a dinner party if they serve Ortolan bunting. It's a European bird. No, thank you. <laughs> 3004, got it right. A bird, y'all. Yeah. 
Let's see that pic again. That looked like some kind of Illuminati party. Yeah. <laughs> eating, eating bird under. A, I don't like that. I don't like that. That was. It, it looked too much like some clans. No, get that out of here. Eat your bird with your face out. Sorry, let me see your face when you're eating that bird. It was a black bird? No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> On Thursday, we asked you about pet preferences, and there were more dog people among you than anything else. Here's your exclusive question number eight. Q8! What group is the most frequent winner of Best in Show at the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show? Sporting, Terrier, or Working? What's it gonna be? This prize is gonna be chunky! I can feel it. All right, they all look pretty good once they made it as far as Westminster, but with a total of 47 wins out of just over 100 shows, the runaway winner is Terriers. That's right. 2,862 got that one right at question number eight. I love Terriers so much. You got Jack Russell, Yorkshire, uh, West Highland White, Scottish. So many Terriers, and they're all adorable. I love the puppies so much. Yeah. <laughs> I know so much about dogs. Question number nine, hope you're feeling fine. Which is not a real call sign used when transporting the U.S. President? Navy One, Ground Force One, or Olympus One? Which one is it not? All right. You've heard of Air Force One and Marine One, but the Secret Service will jump through hoops to make commuting sound cool. We know this, okay? There are ones for every branch of the military, and motorcades have been called Ground Force One. Olympus? Not so much. That's the movie with Gerard Butler and Morgan Freeman and Angela Bassett. 2,358. Uh oh! Oh! Yeah, what's up, quackers? I guess that means it's a gift drop. <laughs> Gift drop is happening now. Get a gift drop, y'all. Mm, a little tasty gift drop. Ooh, a succulent little mm, 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 gift drop. Let us know what you got in the chat. Question number 10, my friends. Time to get it in. Here we go. What car brand is mentioned in All in the Family's theme song? LaSalle, Packard, or Studebaker? Those were the days. All right, not many people could decode the entire squawking theme song, okay? Filled with depression era nostalgia. That opened this TV classic. But it was fairly easy to make out the next to last line. G.R. Old LaSalle ran great. 2,315 of you got it right, LaSalle. Come on, pal. Grab a fella, grab a gal, because we heading on to question number 11. All dogs go to heaven, here we go. Which of these ethnic demographics is largest in the US? Filipino, Korean, or Vietnamese? What's it gonna be? Diversity is the essence of the American experience, and so many Asian cultures have brought their style to the US shores, okay? And the more than four million Filipino Americans are way ahead of those other two. Filipino, yes, 1,984 are moving on to the final question of the game. Question 12. Question 12. No, 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 no. <laughs> question 12. No, 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 no. Money Question 12. Here we go, Q12, get this one right, and you are getting some money. Simple as that. All right, here we go. A famous scientist had the same name as the first person to run the US Department of what? Agriculture, Commerce, or Education? Ooh. A little history, a little science. It wouldn't be Q12 if it didn't make you say, what? For real? Okay, here we go. Now's where I reveal to you if you uh, are a winner. You're all winners though, I love you, all dearly. Here we go, scientists are cool things to name kids after. Albert Brooks, y'all know him? He was born with the name Albert Einstein, you know? And an American named Isaac Newton grew up to be what was then called Commissioner of Agriculture. 
We have 987 winners of HQ Trivia, baby! Uh, uh. Wait, this is the one. This is a TikTok. <laughs> Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Oh! Uh. That's what I'm talking about. Everybody's five dollars richer. My mimer. <laughs> Alien Wolf. Crazy boy. Allah 91. Just to name a few, and who else? Oh, Louis Ward, Roberto, Eleanor, Amal Bauer, Messia, Super Dewey. <laughs> Congratulations, everybody. Thank you so much for playing. Q2 was a bit tricky. If you were born in 1994, you did not see the wall fall. Big facts. Uh, we said all. Okay. Well, I hope that put some fireworks in your evening, maybe even your wallet. But if you didn't, uh, you, you know, you didn't win, there's always tomorrow. And you don't have to wait for a holiday to play HQ because we're here on a nightly basis. Same time, same app. And we always say the more the merrier. So show on up and get your glow on up. Woo! Remember to answer the census, whether it's by mail, by phone, or at 2020census.gov. And don't forget the great work done by Team Rubicon, okay? You can go to hqtrivia.com slash Rubicon to donate right now. Change some lives. Feel good. Until next time, this is Matt Richards, the money flipper, quoting the words of Adlai Stevenson. Patriotism is not short, frenzied outbursts of emotion, but the tranquil and steady dedication of a lifetime. Hi H Cuties, my name is Barbara Brown and I'm with the 2020 Census. We're here to ask you to fill out your census. You can complete it online, by phone, or you can send it out through the mail. The census counts every single person living in the United States. It's safe, easy, and important, and it helps decide where hundreds of billions of dollars are spent. Your answers can never be shared with any other agency or court, and it's confidential. So visit 2020census.gov and help shape your future.